Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about type 1 binary ionic compounds. We're going to learn how to name them and we're going to learn how to write the chemical formulas for them. So what is a type 1 binary ionic compound? Well, let's break this down here, people. First of all, we learned in an earlier video that a compound is two or more different elements chemically bonded together. And what does it mean to be ionic? Well, anytime you're ionic, you're going to have a metal bonded to a non-metal. Okay, so we have a compound one of which is a metal and one of which is a non-metal and the fact that it's binary the prefix bi just means two so we have a compound that consists of two different elements and the fact that it's type one right here means that the metal comes from either groups one or two and is either silver zinc or aluminum so anytime you have a metal that comes from groups one or two and is either silver zinc or aluminum and it's bonded to a non-metal this is going to be a type 1 binary ionic compound. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. If we take a look at this example here, lithium chloride is a type 1 binary ionic compound. Why? Because we have a metal and we have a nonmetal, right? We only have two different elements here, lithium and chlorine. One of them is a metal and one of them is a nonmetal. And specifically, this metal here comes from group 1. Okay, so anytime you have a metal coming from group 1 or 2, and is either silver, zinc, or aluminum, and it's bonded to a nonmetal, it's going to be a type 1 binary ionic compound. Same with calcium nitride. Okay, calcium comes from group 2 on the periodic table, it's bonded to nitrogen, which is a nonmetal, and so bam, you end up with a type 1 binary ionic compound. And in this video, we're going to learn how to name type 1 binary ionic compounds, and we're going to learn how to write the chemical formulas for type 1 binary ionic compounds. So let's jump right in with a few example problems. All right, so let's learn how to name type 1 binary ionic compounds. So what if you're given the chemical formulas for a binary or specifically a type 1 binary ionic compound? First of all, how can we tell that all of these chemical formulas here represent type 1 binary ionic compounds? Well, we can tell, first of all, because we have a metal bonded to a nonmetal and every single one of these right and every single one of these we have a metal bonded to a nonmetal and keep in mind that the most electronegative element gets listed first and so this is why BE comes before F and so we have a metal bonded to a nonmetal metal bonded to a nonmetal same thing here same thing here same thing here and specifically the metal that we're looking at comes from groups one or two and is either silver zinc or aluminum so we have a type 1 binary ionic compound here and when we name these it's pretty simple it says right here that when naming a type 1 binary ionic compound simply name the metal followed by the nonmetal with an IDE ending for example the metal here is called beryllium right it's beryllium and it's bonded to a fluorine atom well when we're naming this in a type 1 binary ionic compound we drop the ene and add an IDE suffix so this right here becomes beryllium fluoride this right here would become sodium chloride this right here would become zinc bromide this right here would become lithium oxide this becomes magnesium sulfide and this is calcium phosphide okay so the first thing you have to do is first be able to determine what type of compound it is we're going to learn about type 1 type 2 type 3 uh, compounds and so you first need to be able to determine that this is a a type 1 binary ionic compound and follow, follow the rules for naming these compounds that you see right here and you should get it right every single time. But what if we're working the other way? What if you are given the name and you're asked to write the chemical formula? Well let's take a look at that. Alright so what if you're given the name of a type 1 binary ionic compound and you're asked to write the chemical formulas? So for example we are given the name sodium bromide but we want to write the correct chemical formula here. How does that work? Well it says right here when writing the chemical formulas for type 1 binary ionic compounds we're gonna to have to add subscripts to each atom in the compound so that the ionic charges of the two different atoms adds up to zero. So whenever we have a metal bonded to a nonmetal the ionic charges always must add up to zero and that's an important concept and so what we have to do is we have to add subscripts to the elements in our chemical formula to get those ionic charges to add up to zero for example sodium we know comes from group one on our periodic table of elements so all those have a positive one charge 
bromine or bromide comes from group 17 and it has a negative one charge. So if we take a look, we have a positive one charge here and a negative one charge here. These two charges add up to zero. Plus one and minus one add up to zero. And so we don't need to add any subscripts here. And so our chemical formula for sodium bromide is just going to be NaBr. Let's take a look at this one. If we take a look, rubidium, the chemical symbol is Rb. And the ion forms positive one ions because it comes from group one on the periodic table. Sulfide comes from group 16, and so it forms negative two or two minus ions. Uh, and so if we take a look here, this charge and this charge do not add up to zero. Plus one and minus two do not add up to zero. But if we have another rubidium add ion here, plus one and plus one is now going to add up to plus two and this plus two charge is now going to cancel out the negative charge over here so how do we show that there's two rubidiums in a chemical formula we do that by writing a subscript that we see right here of two okay so the correct chemical formula here will be rb2 and just one little sulfide so rb2s will be the correct chemical formula if we take a look right here magnesium nitride we know magnesium forms positive two ions or two plus ions and we know nitride is n minus three these two charges don't add up to zero so it looks like if you have three of these the total charge will be plus six and if you have two of these the total charge will be minus six and they add up to zero and so that's why we get mg3n2 all right and that's why we get uh, silver phosphide being ag3p here because silver you're going to have to have three of these all containing a plus one charge and you're going to have phosphide which is a negative three the plus threes and the negative negative three ends up adding up to zero and so we have ag3p here so let's take a look at a few examples and see if you can get some of these correct right, so when you write the chemical formulas you're going to need a periodic table so we have one right here we have to write the correct chemical formula for sodium chloride we know sodium is a positive one ion and we know chloride is a negative one ion these two charges add up to zero already so you don't need to add any subscripts the correct chemical formula is going to be nacl let's take a look at another example in this example here we're asked to write the correct chemical formula for calcium fluoride calcium comes from group two on our periodic table and all these form positive two ions so calcium is plus two and then we have fluoride over here all these halogens here they form negative one ions and so here we go these two charges do not add up to zero but if we have a second fluoride then the total charge here will be negative two on the right hand side and the total charge here will be plus two so what will our chemical formula be it's going to be caf2 right there's two fluorides indicated or represented by the subscript of two right there so caf2 is the correct chemical formula for calcium fluoride let's take a look at another one okay so let's write the correct chemical formula for beryllium fluoride we know beryllium is in group two on our periodic table and it forms positive two ions if we take a look we see that uh, phosphide is in group 15 on the periodic table and these guys typically form negative three ions right and so if we take a look the lowest common multiple of two and three is going to be six so how do i get this to be a positive six and how do i get this to be a negative six i'm going to need three of these i'm going to need three beryllium's and i'm going to need two phosphides right so if we take a look now, the total charge here is plus six. The total charge here is negative six. These add up to zero. So we end up with Be3, P2 as our correct chemical formula here. Let's take a look at another example. All right, in this example, we're asked to name this compound right here. We can see cesium comes from group, uh, group one on the periodic table and it's bonded to a non-metal, right? So we know this is a type one binary ion a compound because the metal comes from group one and so when we name this this is just going to be cesium uh, fluoride cesium fluoride will be the correct correct name for this compound here let's take a look at another one all right if we take a look at this we have to write the name for ca3p2 once again we have a metal and we have a non-metal here so this is an ionic compound. We know that calcium comes from group two on our periodic table. So this makes this a type one ion, a binary ionic compound. And so when we name this, we follow the rule. We just call this calcium. And then we change the ending of phosphorus to an IDE ending and we get calcium phosphide. Okay, let's take a look at one more example.
All right, so if we take a look, AALBR3, ALBR3, the correct name of this is going to be aluminum bromide. Aluminum bromide, right? Aluminum is a type 1 metal. It only forms a uh, positive 3 ions, so it's a type 1 metal. It's bonded to a nonmetal, so we name the metal aluminum. We change the ending to ide, and we get aluminum bromide. So now that we work through some example problems, try these. What I would do right now is pause this little video and try to fill this table in, okay? Try to uh, figure out the chemical formula for sodium phosphide. Try to figure out the name of this little compound right here. Try to write the chemical formula for strontium fluoride. Pause this little video. Take about five minutes to try these on your own, and I'm going to give you the answers right about now. So here are the answers. How did you do? Hopefully you got them all correctly. You got 100%. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner. That will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.